Okay, this is a series using Blender 2.6, although it probably will work with 2.5 as well, uh, majority of this stuff. Um, and this series is using Python in the Blender game engine. It's something I've touched on in the past very little. I do a lot of videos on Blender game engine using the Logic Brick Editor. Um, and I'm pretty good with Python and I'm pretty good with Blender, but I don't, I, I haven't done much with them together and I've been meaning to change that for like three or four years now. So this is my attempt once again to do that. Um, and we're just going to today write a little Python script that moves an object. Now you can use the logic bricks to do this, um, but knowing how to do it with the script allows you to do more advanced things later down the line. Um, so here we go. What I'm going to do is we're just going to make this default uh, cube here move on the x-axis, and then we'll try other axes as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this little timeline down here because I don't need it into a text editor. I'm going to say new create logic brick. I'm going to call this move x dot py. You can call it pretty much whatever you'd want, which you'd like. And I'm also going to enable all three of these here. There's just formatting things. Uh, this one here color codes your script. Uh, this one's for indenting and this one numbers your lines there. And uh, first thing we do is, if you're familiar with Python, which I recommend you become familiar with Python before you um, start jumping into using Python in Blender, but whatever you want to do, uh, you know that Python has plenty of modules to use. Well, Blender has a game engine module. So what we're going to say is we're going to say import BGE, Blender Game Engine. So now we're, we've imported the Blender Game Engine module, so now we can use it. Next, we're going to make a function. We'll say define. We'll call it main. And um, then I am going to create this function, and we're going to create an object. This object is going to be uh, the controller object. Basically, it's what's um, an object of the from the Blender Game Engine. So we're going to say C-O-N-T for controller. We're going to say we're going to use the module Blender Game Engine. With From within that, we're going to use the logic. And we are going to get the current controller. As you're wondering, I am looking at notes because I do not know how to do this off the top of my head. Um, so we're grabbing basically the current controller, which you'll I'll explain in a minute when we start linking this stuff up. Next we're gonna say we'll say owner. We're gonna create an object called owner. Then we're gonna say we're gonna use the last object we created, and we're going to get the owner of that, which is going to be our object. In this case, the cube or whatever we whatever object we link this script to this script. Because we can write this script once and link a lot of different objects to it and it needs to know what object we're trying to affect and if it's itself this is what is allowing us to do that so next we're going to say owner the object we just created we're going to reset its position on the x-axis and what we're going to do here is um, we're just going to have it move a certain amount so we're going to say what the current x location is plus equals 0.1 the higher this number, the faster it moves because more it will jump each loop. Um, we can also set up specific position, but here we're going to want to continually move on the x-axis. So we're done with that function. So now we just need to call that function. We'll say main. We'll connect that, or we'll type that there, and that's just telling it to run the main function we just created. Great. So now I'm going to split this window here. And we're going to open up the logic editor. We certainly, we currently have the cube selected. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a sensor, and we're going to say always. So always. So while this is happening, we are going to connect. Oh, not n. We're going to click connect it to our Python script. So Python connect these, and then choose the script from the dropdown we just created. We called it down here, move x.py. We can click here and see it in the list. Now, if we run it at this point, hovering your cursor over to the 3D view and pressing P, doesn't look like anything happened. Well, it actually did. The cube moved 0 0.1 um, blender units um, once. Well, what we need to do is have it loop that over and over again. So what we're going to do is we're going to click this. This is saying repeat every single frame uh, we it wants to repeat so we press P and the
the cube moves. Now, obviously, like I said in the past, you can earlier in the video, you can use just the logic errors. You don't have to write any code to do that, but you may want to do more advanced things later on with certain movements based on certain things, and knowing how to do this with a script will definitely help you, all depending on what you're trying to do here. Now, we can see it moving. We can make it also move faster or slower. Um, we can say instead of 0, 1, units we can say a half a blender unit each loop so every frame woo, it moves so it's faster uh, we can also slow it down some we can change the number or we can change up here the frequency of what this loops at so basically zero is every frame so one would be every other frame if we put this up to like five you can see it moving much slower because it's moving every fifth frame or sixth frame rather than every frame uh, so that's things to think about um, obviously we can change this to Y and we can say P and you can see it goes on the Y axis. We can change this to a Z down here and Z and we can do P up here and moves on the Z axis. We can put a whole nother line. We can have it move the owner, which once again is the current object position on the X axis plus equals 0 0.1 and now it'll move on the X and Y axis or not oh getting an error because I spelt this wrong there we go so now it's moving at an angle now uh, you know we didn't see any input as far as errors and that's why let's see if we come over here if you start Blender, instead of clicking on the icon, you start it in the terminal, you will see any error outputs in the terminal. So whether in Windows, Linux, Mac, if you start it in the terminal or your shell or whatever you want to call it, um, you'll get your error outputs here. So you can see here, the last time I ran it before, when it wasn't moving, it says right here that it doesn't know what this object is. So I would have seen, oh, I spelt that wrong. So if you have like a page of code and you're trying to figure out what's going on, that might help some. Uh, okay, so we've done that once, but let's add in up here a sphere. If I just added a sphere, did I not? Oh, two sphere. <laughs> add in a, yeah, icosphere is fine. So now I can do the same thing for this. I can say always, turn this on. I can add, or sorry, Python connect this and link that object to the same script and you can see they both move um, now so how does it know how to move each one because they're in different locations well because in our script we're setting the owner we're setting the current controller um, and then the current the owner and that is our object it is whatever object we're linking to so you can link this script to as many different objects you want and it will go when it says owner dot x position or position dot x it knows that it's talking about that current object the uh, active object um, I hope that makes sense to you I don't know how else to explain that um, and if I shift D clone this it should still have the same logic bricks so that one should already be linked and we're creating objects that move with our scripts here so I hope you found this useful it's a very simple little script um, I'm gonna save this pi script this uh, this uh, I'm sorry blender file and put it up on my site uh, check out the links in the description to try to uh, hopefully I will remember to post this file so check out the links in the description to find the file if you're having issues maybe downloading my file you'll see the difference so I hope that you have a great day and please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. I have links in the description. Have a great day. filmsbychris.com forward slash Amazon is a great place to go to help support this site. Help us help you find the products you're looking for. Check it out.